Cheers, friends. Hey there. Welcome to the Carnival Radiance. Three-day cruise out of Long Beach, California. So we want to give you an overview of our experiences here on board, like some of the great dining we've had. They are super attentive when it comes to food allergies. I've had some gluten-free hits, but I've also had some gluten-free misses. Which is also a great way to describe the entertainment. There are definitely some great shows you want to catch while you're on board, and some you can probably skip. And what would a cruise video be without a cabin tour? So we're going to go over that and much more, everything there is to see here and do on the Carnival Radiance. The Carnival Radiance began service in the year 2000. But back then, she was known as the Carnival Victory. She was actually one of the largest cruise ships when she debuted, with a passenger capacity of over 2,700. But in 2020, the Carnival Victory went into dry dock and in 2021, after a $200 million renovation, she emerged the Carnival Radiance. That $200 million bought 110 new cabins, Shaquille O'Neal's Big Chicken, Guy's Pig and Anchor Barbecue Smokehouse, the Heroes Tribute Bar, the Casina del Capitano Italian Restaurant, Bonsai Sushi, and a Red Frog Pub, along with all the ship's public spaces being transformed, including the water park, sports square, youth facilities, retail shops, cloud nine spa, and of course the main show lounge. This was a short cruise, a little weekend getaway for us. Onboarding was quite a breeze, pretty simple. They had a lot of people available to do the check-ins and verify everybody's IDs. The process was like six minutes. Yeah. Super fast. Our boarding time was between 11 and 11.30 a.m. Yeah. 10 to 10.30 and the 10.30 to 11 line still going. So I guess they were late. It takes a little bit longer. So I guess when you're on time, it's faster. Right now, the Radiance is just doing a short loop from Long Beach, California down to Ensenada, Mexico. And back there is the Queen Mary. It doesn't cruise anymore, but you can't have dinner or stay the night on there. It's supposed to be very haunted. When we were stepping onto the Radiance, it felt like we were boarding a brand new ship. It definitely did not feel like we were stepping on a ship that had been sailing for over two decades. And when you get on board, what's the first thing you should do? Check in at your muster station. So you find your muster station and your boarding pass. I really wish the answer was head to the bar, but it's a law that they have to go over these safety instructions with you. Just finish up the mustard station and check in, which is a good idea because on some cruises, your drink package will not start until you've checked in at your mustard station. So just, just get it done. First thing, <laughs> first thing. I would say there was a good amount of entertainment for a short cruise. Carnival's Fun Squad, they brought the life to the party. They bring a lot of good energy and they know how to get the crowd going. At the 80s Neon Glow Night or at the White Party, they had everybody singing along and dancing with them. You are the first out of three contestants. All you need to do is give us your best dance moves. But remember, this is a family friendly show, all right? Please remember, it's a family-friendly show, all right? Comedians are a big draw on a cruise ship. 
and they can be very hit and miss. Uh, fortunately on this trip, it was a miss. What's nice is how the comedy club was set up. If you couldn't see the stage, they had plenty of televisions, so you could see the act pretty much wherever you were. But one thing to note, the Limelight Lounge was easy to find on a map, but hard to get to. The Limelight Lounge is located between the Sunrise Restaurant and the Sunset Restaurant, the two main dining halls of the ship. And they don't want you walking through the Sunrise Dining Room. And the door from the Sunset Restaurant is usually locked. If you're at the Sunset Restaurant, you could go out one of the side doors to the outside deck, then walk down the ship until the next door and come in. But honestly, the best way to get there is to go to the casino bar first, and you'll find the mid-ship elevators right behind the bar. Go down one deck and you'll be at the Limelight Lounge. And the Carnival Radiance did have a pretty decent variety of different kinds of music. The piano bar is usually worth checking out. It's another spot with a lot of good energy and audience participation. But like a comedy show, it all depends on who's behind the mic. But for us on this trip, the highlight of the entertainment was the Radiance Band. And these guys got some talent, which we got to see in multiple shows across different music genres. And they knew how to work a crowd and make it a party. There was one stage production during our short cruise. Now we enjoyed the music and we could tell that the performers are very talented at what they do, but the interpretive dance didn't really hit home with us. But they did have drones and that was kind of cool. I went to a lot of drive-in movies as a kid, and these dive-in movies had that same vibe. There's just something about being outdoors, under the stars, and watching a good movie. You absolutely have to take advantage of the Carnival Hub app. That is where you'll find the times for trivia, for shows, for movies, outside by the pool. And the Carnival Radiance has plenty of bars. The atrium bar is where you first board the ship, there's the Heroes Tribute Bar, Carnival Salute to military service members and their families. Everybody is welcome here, it's pretty much a sports bar. There's the Casino Bar, which I think was the only one that was open 24-7. There's the Red Frog Pub, where you can catch some live music. And tucked away in the back was also a foosball and shuffleboard table. The Alchemy Bar is where you get elevated spirits. They pride themselves on their mixology and have a pretty interesting cocktail selection. They can also whip you up some nice non-alcoholic cocktails. The adults only Serenity deck had its own bar, where the bartenders were known to have a heavy pour. The Lido deck pool had two bars on either side of it, which were always pretty popular. Another popular watering hole was the Tides Bar by the Aft Pool. And here's one of the menus so you can kind of get an idea of the type of cocktails they offer as well as the price range. 
So on the buffet level, we did find the menu mate area. The crew member got the head chef. I spoke to him about the gluten-free options on the buffet, which they assured me completely gluten-free, no cross-contamination. They use a different area of the kitchen and use freshly prepared utensils. As for restaurants, specialty dining, when you check in, you just let them know that you have a food allergy. So when you go to the main dining, you just let your server know when they sit you that you do have a food allergy. Because tonight is the first night, I'm a little limited with choices, but they mentioned a grilled chicken breast or a steak, a baked potato and vegetables. So all that sounds pretty tasty. But tonight, once dinner is over, they will present me tomorrow's menu and I'm able to pick and choose anything pretty much that I want and they will make it gluten-free. Now there's never a shortage of things to eat on a cruise. And the Carnival Radiance has about 13 different places to grab a bite to eat. And we try to sample a little bit of each one. The majority of these are complimentary. They're included with your price of admission. And we did pay for one night at the steakhouse. At the back of the ship on deck 10 is Guy's Pig and Anchor. Open for lunch, they had some pretty decent barbecue. The Blue Iguana offers tacos and burritos for breakfast and lunch. We were told they're on corn tortillas, but these were obviously flour. So we can't recommend you go here if you have a gluten allergy. And Guy's Burger Joint is one of the most popular spots for lunch. They have quite a few different toppings, but be sure to tell them you have a gluten allergy so they handle your burger properly. Shaq's Big Chicken is one of the newest additions to the Carnival Cruise Line. Look at this. Like he, my whole hand fits in his palm. <laughs> um, look, practically. Pretty simple breaded chicken strips, either by themselves or on a sandwich, but probably some of the best fries that we found on the ship. Such a sad sight to see. Carnival probably has some of the best quick service pizza we found on any cruise ship. But on this trip, they never had it out on the counter. You always had to get their attention and they would go back into the kitchen and bring it out to you. But the pepperoni pizza here, as well as the quattro fromage, did not disappoint. And the gluten-free version wasn't too bad either. The Italian restaurant, Casina del Capitano, is not complimentary. It is an additional charge for dinner. For lunch, they do offer a complimentary build-your-own pasta bar. The gluten-free noodles were not listed. Just ask your server about it and make sure you note it on your slip. The Carnival Deli offered sandwiches and french fries for lunch and dinner, and usually had a decent amount of people lining up for it. The seafood shack is not complimentary, and they were serving up lobster rolls, shrimp, and other seafood for lunch and dinner. And what is an American cruise ship without a buffet? Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the Lido Marketplace had some pretty decent options. And it was nice to see that they thought about several different allergies. There was a good selection, and they changed it up every day. We did notice that the dinner options pretty much mirrored what was being offered at the main dining room that night. Now buffet food is usually just okay. It's never the hottest, it's never the freshest. But it was good to see that the portion size were kept relatively small and refreshed as they got low. And for the night owls out there, they even offered a late night buffet that didn't open till midnight. There are two main dining rooms, the Sunrise and the Sunset restaurants. On this cruise, we could have selected a dining time frame, but we went with any time dining. So we were always sat in the Sunset restaurant. We often went early and got seated with some pretty nice views. I would definitely recommend anytime dining. After 5.30, once the dining room's open, you can show up at any time. So you're able to catch a show, perform some karaoke, listen to music, enjoy a cocktail, and not feel rushed to get to the dining room. One tip that we have for the anytime diners is you have to check in to get a table. You can do this at the front of the restaurant, but then you'll just be hanging around waiting. The best way to do it is through the Carnival app, and you can do this in your room or anywhere else on the ship before you go. The app will give you an estimated wait time so you can decide to head to the restaurant or just chill at the bar.
And one night on the cruise, we made reservations at the Steakhouse 555. The Steakhouse is not complimentary. It was $49 per adult. It's $15 for kids. And that includes appetizers, salad, entree, sides, and desserts. After we sat down, we were surprised by a complimentary amouche bouche, a little bite prepared by the chef. That night, it was a little Wagyu beef slider. It was okay, but there was no gluten-free option. The lobster bisque has yet to disappoint. The lobster bisque is gluten-free, only the puff is not. Okay. So if I wanted to take a taste of it, I can, is what you're saying. Yes. The saying exactly. he has to share. Yes. Okay. Will you let some support, Gina? Okay, thank I'm you. <laughs> but I was a little disappointed with the cut of the steak. There were several pieces of gristle in there that you can't chew through. I went with onion rings and french fries for the sides and they were pretty tasty. The dessert, it was just okay. It, it wasn't the chocolate decadence I was hoping for. And sadly, the gluten-free options for dessert were pretty limited. So if you're not jamming out to some live music and you're not eating, what else is there to do on the Carnival Radiance? There's an arcade for the young and the young at heart, but these games are not complimentary. Every play will be charged back to your room. And on board, there are several different kids clubs for different age ranges, which I think kept the kids pretty busy because there's never a problem with the kids just kind of running crazy through the ship. So there was this little cafe right off the atrium where you can get your caffeine fix as well as some sweet treats. They also had books and board games for people to borrow. And probably the next most popular spot on the ship after the buffet, of course, is the casino. There are plenty of shops. It can pretty much be your one-stop shop because they cover everything from Saks Fifth Avenue to CVS. They have luxury gifts as well as the last minute things you may have forgotten. And that includes if you forgot to get a little cheesy souvenir while you were in port. Of course, there's the onboard spa area and the gym. And we want to shout out to the crew members because everywhere we turned, they were working hard to keep the Radiance ship shape and clean. And up on the sports square deck, you can find all kinds of things to do. They had a foosball table, half of a basketball court, a little outdoor fitness area, along with some cornhole boards. And this is where you also find the jogging track, the obligatory giant chess set, a pool table, and this really cool ropes course for those that are not afraid of heights. And one deck higher, you'll find the miniature golf course. Now all these activities on the sports square are complimentary. For those looking for a more leisure vacation, there are plenty of places to lounge. At the aft of the ship, there's a pool and two hot tubs. And it looks like during the refurbishment, they did replace at least one of the hot tubs on board. And the others could still use some TLC. And it's been a few years since the refurbishment, but the area around the hot tubs are still looking good. And in the middle Lido deck, you'll find another pool with two more hot tubs and the water park. And then there's our favorite area, the adults only Serenity Deck. Here you'll find another hot tub, as well as their own bar with padded loungers, and you're right above all the kids clubs so you're never too far from the kiddos. And now for the room tour. On this cruise we booked the basic interior room. And we booked it as a guaranteed room, which means we didn't get to pick it, it was picked for us. We were in room 6369 which put us above the casino on deck five. And there was one night where Gina did say she heard the noise coming from below. And if you didn't know, there is laundry service on board. You can request to have your dirty clothes picked up and washed for you, or you can do it yourself at these laundromats. The room was adequate for what we wanted, just a place to sleep while we enjoyed the cruise ship. The king bed can be split into two twin beds. They had these really convenient light switches right at the headboard so you didn't have to get out of bed to turn off the lights. They had a European outlet as well as some USB ports 
and a standard US outlet. The water is not complimentary. This cabinet was nice to store little odds and ends and things like that. We didn't use the refrigerator much, but it was nice knowing we had one. And there was plenty of space for hanging our clothes. And you have your life vest and the safe. And on the opposite side, you have the bathroom with the light switches on the outside. We have no complaints with the room. The bed was comfortable and the pillows were soft. We never had an issue with the bathroom, the water, or the drainage. Our room attendant was very attentive and kept the place looking nice. Overall, this was a really nice weekend getaway. Filled with fun and excitement and relaxation. And the only down thing is that it was a short weekend getaway. Three nights just doesn't seem long enough on the cruise, but really that means we were just having a good time and didn't want it to end. We really recommend the first night you check out as much of the entertainment as you can to find the acts that you really vibe with and then find their schedule for the rest of the trip in the app. The first word that pops into my head when I think of a carnival cruise is fun. From the moment you wake up in the morning to the time you're headed back to your room at the end of the day. And the food was good. There was a lot of variety even with just the complimentary options. And the room was comfortable. Yeah, it would have been nice to have a balcony. We never had a problem finding a nice, comfortable, quiet spot on the Serenity deck. And the ship was in great shape. It didn't feel like it had been in service for over two decades. It had a fresh, modern feel to it. We would definitely take this cruise again, but I think we would opt for the four night cruise that includes Catalina Island. We really appreciate all the friends that we've made here on YouTube and your continued support. We love hearing your thoughts and answering your questions in the comments below. And if you have any cruise ship hacks for making the most of an onboard experience, we'd love for you to share them. So until next time, friends, cheers.